Good Friday afternoon. Time for our monthly chat with our friends at the Oklahoma Film and Music Office. Dave Morris here alongside Tava Molojsovsky from Oklahoma Film and Music. Great to see you as always. You too, David. My good friend and former <laughs> colleague Kyle Roberts back in the Oklahoma Video Studio under yeah. our lights in front of our cameras. Something you're not a stranger <laughs> to by any means. Good to see you again. You too. And Mr. John Cooper, Hall of Famer the Oklahoma Music Hall of Fame. John Cooper from the Red Dirt Rangers, good to see you as well, sir. Glad to be here today. It's nice to meet you. Uh, we're in for a treat. He's going to play a song for us later, and he's warming up the mandolin over there. It's on tune, on point, and sounding sharp. So we appreciate your time today. Absolutely. I'm glad to be here. Tava, we catch up with you every month to learn about what's going on around the state, uh, nationally, internationally, with state flavors uh, about film and music. Last time, we were kind of wrapping up uh, Dead Center stuff. Uh, what's the state of ongoing film projects and things right now before we get into Woody Fest which is next week sure sure um, so yeah last month when we spoke we had we were just wrapping up Chickasaw Rancher which right. uh, was a rebate pro a rebate uh, project of ours that um, the Chickasaw Nation produced um, and they successfully wrapped up they're you know taking care of their paperwork and um, I think everything went really smoothly and then currently in the queue the rebate queue we have multiple projects. We actually have the Pioneer Woman, Reed Drummond's um, hit show on the Food Network. We have her actually um, commencing photography for one of her episodes next week. Cool. Um, and then she'll be uh, producing, making several episodes throughout the, through, through December here, um, utilizing the rebate, which is wonderful to have that kind of um, new partnership with them because they've never tapped into that before. And um, so that's really positive. And then there are a couple of other indie projects. So Camp Coldbrook is one that actually starts, they should be crewed up by now. Um, they start filming at the end of uh, July. And then we have multiple. And I think last month I was telling you there is like an insane number of active projects in the rebate queue. I think we're at about 14, maybe mm -hmm. 15 now. And it seems like there was about a dozen last time we chatted. Which, right, and some of those projects were slated to shoot in the spring and they have shifted a little bit. So they're, you know, some of them are starting now. They're, they're waiting for it to, to get warm, up. right? They're waiting for it to get real warm, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It must be a creative decision, but, um, and so several of those, I would just encourage any local filmmaker uh, or support service company or caterer, anybody that's looking to connect with those uh, projects to, to keep a close eye on the dates that we list on our uh, website because they should all be crewing up. Now, we'll also put out crew calls if somebody needs help with connecting with crew um, or extra calls. But um, those, So those will all be starting to film multiple starting in August, September, October, all the way through November. Their website's a great resource, okfilmmusic.org. Uh, if you're looking for work or if you have some work, stuff like that, it's a lot that you can learn on that website mm -hmm. and a place to kind of get your name out there as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can, if you're a, a crew member or have a company that services the industry, or if you're a musical talent, you can also register yourself or your music business into our production directory or music directory. People can also put locations in there. We have a location directory. So there's a lot of, I mean, that's where we send people because we can't say hire Kyle or hire, you know, John, or we say go to our website. Here's a pool of Go talent. to the directories and have fun. And, you know, and so we encourage people to keep their, their profiles updated with current, um, you know, their credentials and things like that. Make sure there's a good working number and things because people, I mean, people are using it and they're, that's how they connect with the crew. One of the things we want to talk about this week is the importance of state talent. Mm -hmm. We have such a large group of creative people, talented people, mm -hmm. many of whom have grown up here and have chosen to stay here and share their talents, develop their talents and skill sets. So Kyle and John are mm -hmm. two fantastic examples of such. Mm -hmm. And you can find a lot of that on display next week at Woody Fest. That's right. That's right. I'm excited for Woody Fest. And this gentleman here, mm -hmm. again, the Red Dirt Rangers, um, played every Woody Fest at this point is up to number 20, I believe. This is the 20th annual, yes, we've been to each one. Well, what can people expect when they go to Woody Fest, aside uh, from uh, a good hot time of music? <laughs> <laughs> yes, expect it to be hot, it will be. But what you're gonna see is talent, not only from the state, but from all over the country. Uh, it, we're really excited this year that a large percentage of the Guthrie family is gonna be here. Arlo's Guthrie will be here. Uh, his daughter, Sarah Lee, and Johnny Arian who are a really fine duo. Um, Arlo's other daughter, Annie, and her uh, band, Folk Uke. Um, 
Uh, his son, Ty, will be here as well. The, it's going to be a real family affair for the Guthrie family. And they've really latched on to the festival and are a big, big part of it. That's awesome. Uh, how long has the Red Dirt Rangers been around? Uh, it'll be 30 years for us in March. How do you explain <laughs> your longevity? Uh, <laughs> I didn't have anything else to do for 30 years, <laughs> so that was it basically. No, um, we love the music. We always put the music first. We felt like that was always the most important thing. That uh, that and the fact that we were friends before we had the band. Mm. We, we were never in, we never got into it to have a band. We got together just to jam and play as friends and just for fun on, you know, weekends or weeknights or whatever. Um, and it just eventually turned into a band. The first guy to get us on stage was our friend Jimmy LaFave. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we said at the time, well, why would we want to do that? You know, this is too much fun without an audience or out in, without any pressure. But, you know, you do it once and your friends kind of cheer you on. You get the bug. And the next thing you know, you're in New York City and you're in uh, mm -hmm. Zurich, Switzerland, and you're in Los Angeles. and. <laughs> Wow, it was been, it's just been quite a ride and quite a trip. I'm not sure which is more impressive, the fact the band has stayed together or the fact that you guys have stayed friends. I mean, that's not easy either. Uh, you know, the, well, there was a thing about it. Like I said, we knew all the stuff on each other before we ever had the band, <laughs> so there was no surprises. Yeah. Uh, I think that's really helped. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, 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 is a, it is about friendship, and it's about friendship and music. That's the key. We've always put the music first. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, we've never worried about... Or are we going to be stars or, you know, we got to do this or if we're not making it in a few years, we, got, we can't have, really have a band. Mm -hmm. That was never the concern. The concern was always about making quality music. And that's really it. You know, uh, we'll get to Kyle here in just a second. But to that point of making quality music, and I guess to the point of staying in Oklahoma, you can do that anywhere, including in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, we were, in the early days, we were advised by our label was in Austin, Texas, and this was back in the uh, early 90s, and they were like, man, you've got to come to Austin, you know, you've got to come down here. And we considered it, I mean, you have to, yeah. but um, I think in the end, the choice of us not going to Austin was the best thing we could have done. Because if you go to a town, an industry town, uh, if it's film, L.A., if it's music, you know, L.A., Austin, uh, Nashville, you just become another number and a cog in the machine. Here, you know, we could really uh, uh, not exploit, but we could really nurture our music around people that we love, our friends and family are here, and we play the music of Oklahoma. I mean, that's, we're not playing the music of necessarily, you know, California or Tennessee or, or Texas. This is our music, and we wanted to keep it here. We're glad we kept it here. And, you know, it's just, I can't imagine going anywhere else. We've got to see the world anyway. Yeah. I mean, we've traveled all over the country, coast to coast, border to border, been to Europe. Um, you know, you don't have to leave to be able to do those things, especially now with... Yeah. Technology uh, you really know, helps out a lot, too. Yeah, with the uh, you know, social media, with media the way that it is now. You can get your music out around the world from your porch in, you know, Norman. <laughs> In your jammies. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> He's John Cooper with the Red Dirt Rangers. We're going to hear from him in just a second, including uh, a little Woody Guthrie action, I believe. Sure. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, speaking of growing up local and producing locally, uh, Mr. Kyle Roberts. That's right. Uh, what are you up to? First of all, yeah. congratulations. You had a, a big announcement this week. Yeah, we're going to have another girl. So we two in the Roberts family. <laughs> You're outnumbered. Uh, very excited about that. <laughs> and that's a big part of actually the last three short films we've done are very female driven and female empowering uh, superhero films. And of course, like I'm a big geek, if anyone knows me. <laughs> uh, so we kind of stick around that superhero realm uh, when we can. Uh, but yeah, growing up here, real, real quickly, my story is uh, I went to Oklahoma Christian and I was dead set on going to, to L.A. after it. Uh, and thankfully, got a job here at the Oklahoma News OK. I was here for seven years and mm -hmm. really loved and enjoyed my time here and got to make a ton of uh, connections locally, just kind of part of the job, sure. <laughs> filming people and going all around the, the state um, kind of thing. And, and that led to, you know, making the Post Human Project and then all these other short films and stop motions and all these other things that, uh, again, we've got to travel going to Japan um, and Europe and other places with our films, just making it here and um, making some, some noise, I guess. <laughs> but it takes hustle. Mm -hmm. It sure <laughs> right? does. <laughs> yeah, it's the thing that people don't talk about <laughs> a lot. Yeah, I mean, right, right. I mean, it's, it's nice to talk about the finished product. Sure. Here's my right. music. Here's my film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But 95% of the time, if not more, though, it's hustle, right? Yeah. 
Uh, I might start tearing up if I really talk about it. But it, it's, it's a lot of hard work and grit and determination to really, like shaking, <laughs> to really like see something through. Uh, and sure. I'm sure music is the same way, but from my point of view, especially film, we have hundreds of people working on a project and then just two or three like really like pushing and pushing and pushing until it actually gets somewhere. And you're collaborating with a lot of locals as well. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we just uh, finished uh, shooting a pilot uh, called The Grave, uh, which is a 1920s uh, about a reporter um, set, in the, set in the 20s, kind of our version of the Oklahoman in the 20s. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called the Oklahoma City Spire, <laughs> but inspired by the Oklahoman. Uh, and he is a is vigilante. He's, he's uh, was in World War One. He's kind of come back and has shell shock. And it's kind of our version of Batman without being a billionaire. So he doesn't have all the money, but he kind of uses the power of the press to go after some uh, corruption in the time, in the city of the time. And when that doesn't happen, then he puts on the mask and goes after him with his, with his fist. That's shot great. locally? Yep, shot locally, and it's, it's a pilot. And so when we go to, we're headed to Comic-Con soon with a film called The Bull of Tears, and when we head out there, we're going to be pitching it to Netflix and Amazon and Hulu's and stuff like you that. You touched a little bit about, <laughs> yeah. and, and let me get back to that in just a second, sure. but tell us more about the Bulleteers, yeah. why the female powered. Yeah, so uh, Bulleteers uh, is a sci-fi, it's a cross-genre, sci-fi, western, comedy. <laughs> uh, of course. Set, yeah, set in the late, <laughs> late 1800s. It's very uh, female-driven, female-empowered. Uh, it centers around three, um, I guess the story, there's a guy coming through town uh, his name is Todd. Uh, he hates it. The, it he wants to be called the Death Devil, uh, but people call him by his name Todd, and he hates that. So it's kind of an ongoing joke. They're like, "Oh, Todd. Okay, yeah." Anyway, so uh, and he shoots the sheriff of the town, uh, and his daughter um, goes at like assembles this team of misfits to go after him. So in general, that's kind of what you think of of a western. But but then you take the sci-fi super, superhero element mm -hmm. and the female empowered and the comedy and kind of flip that on. On its on its head and it feels fresh. Um, the every festival we've been to, we've been to New York and won a bunch of awards in Chicago, and now it's headed to San Diego Comic Con. Uh, all made here at the Oklahoma City 48 Hour um, right. Film Challenge, and then we give it some love after some more visual effects and stuff. But but the big heart of it was built in those two days, uh, which is a challenge in itself. And, the, and that which is coming up in July as yep. well. I think uh, when is it? The 21st or the 23rd? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll be at Comic Con during <laughs> during it this year. Oh, that's year. right. Okay. But yeah. Yeah. Um, before we get back to the Netflix, Amazon, Hulu thing, that's sure. a big deal. Oklahomans at Comic Con. Yeah, I mean, just to have Kyle there, and I know um, other people that that go to Comic Con as well from Oklahoma to have our state filmmakers represented there um, on such an inter it's an international level. I think. I mean, we're so proud to to watch you guys go and and then come home and and keep making those projects here. I mean, it's huge. Um, yeah, San Diego Comic-Con has been a blast. This is our third time going. Uh, this year I read that they sold out their 200 some thousand passes in eight minutes. <laughs> so people were like, had uh, Google alerts and other things, so like when it, whenever it's like ready, concert. yeah, they right. try to get yeah. on. <laughs> you have so to have not, five of them. So not only to get to go, but to get to go and be a part of the film, be in panels mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And yeah. each year we get to do more things. Um, we'll be at like a, a Wired Magazine party and some other things that like get to actually network instead of just, which is, it's a blast anyway, but it's kind of right. shoulder to shoulder, three mile radius of 300,000 nerds <laughs> all together, so which up, is a blast though. to me anyway. Uh, awesome. But it's, yeah. it's a great experience for sure. Kyle and John both on this question, talking about Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, and I suppose you could throw Spotify, SoundCloud, all those platforms in there as well. Mm -hmm. Those have grown so much and have such a good audience. Uh, is that almost as good of an aim as opposed to Hollywood big box TV. I mean, it was, it's it was, almost like you're not yeah. going to go wrong either way, especially if you can go either way. Yeah, sure. mm -hmm. and, and for me, I think it all depends on your audience and who you're trying to target. Um, and I just saw, I think yesterday, I read an article from um, Entertainment Weekly that Facebook bought two original um, shows that they're, they're producing. So it seems like everyone's kind of getting yeah. in that market, mm -hmm. which is great. Um, so it's, to me, if, like, if you have a, a teen movie or something like that, that's actually perfect for anything online because that's where Your demographics is. may be there anyway. Yeah, and then for mm -hmm. us, for The Grave, like, we felt like it would just be really good as a show and it's something that we could do kind of on a lower cost and doesn't have to be big television bucks. Uh, but but maybe um, even um, Comic Con HQ is, is a new platform that's much like Netflix um, that they could possibly pick it up and we would love to shoot it all here and then use the rebate and yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So that's definitely what we're going to be pitching while we're out there. Were you guys constantly trying to produce CDs or albums or 
Were you more focused on the live sort of things? And has technology changed how you can get your music out there? Yeah, uh, well, I want to, just going back to the streaming services that you guys were talking about, it's kind of a, it's a double-edged sword for us as musicians and ba a band and then as songwriters. It's a great way to get your product out to people. You know, everybody's there. If people want to find out what you sound like, they can go to Spotify. Most everyone's there. Uh, the, the opposite side of that is as a songwriter, the royalty factor is really, it's really crushing the songwriting yeah. uh, because they pay so very little mm -hmm. uh, per spin. Um, it's really taken the money out of, or you know, any kind of uh, monetary gain out of songwriting, which has really hurt songwriting. So mm -hmm. it's a mixed blessing. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be able to get your stuff out to the world is great, but to not be monetized for it or... It hurts. It hurts songwriting. I think it keeps people away from it. it sounds like the newspaper industry. Yeah. You know, you want people to pay for the paper, yeah. and you can find exactly. it online. Yeah. yeah. Similar technology comes along. It's great for distribution, but how do you monetize? That? Yeah, exactly. All right, Tava. Before we uh, turn it over for some music here, what else should we know about that are uh, things coming up? Sure. I mean, to the songwriting point, uh, the segue back to Woody Fest is that um, they're hosting their second annual songwriting. Uh, workshop, which uh, which will be hosted by Ellis Paul, and um, our office is an official sponsor this year for that, Great. and um, it's on the Saturday, July fifteenth, from two to five. And I know they sold some some uh, ticket, or uh, is it free? I don't know. I think they have to register. I, I think it's free, but I shouldn't. Hold on, I'll have to, <laughs> have to check that point. Anyway, go to our website. Yeah. Yes. And okay, check so music. Org. Sorry, I info. knew I was gonna no. Um, but it, it, it's a great opportunity to um, to learn the craft of songwriting, and then maybe I'll just make a mental note that we need to do um, <laughs> uh, another some kind of a discussion on monetizing. And you know, I know that's a bigger um, a bigger conversation uh, that's happening in D.C. as far as all yes. of the, protecting the songwriters and all that kind of stuff. But um, but but we we have to have the songs or we can't have <laughs> the music yeah, so that's true so we encourage those songwriters to get out there and plug into that and um, as far as I mean as far as festivals and things the Woody Fest obviously and then the 48 hour film festival will be coming up and then just plug into you know go to the live shows and see the um, the Oklahoma talent on in multiple venues around the state there it's it's almost every night now it seems like mm -hmm. and then um, you know, plug in to one of the films that, that or television projects that are happening. So I think that would be my, my final spin. Cool. All right, very good. John, Red Dirt Rangers, Red Dirt Sound, how has that changed from when you guys started to where it is now, or has it? Uh, uh, yes, it has changed. I mean, without a doubt, Red Dirt Music started as, in a specific town, Stillwater, Oklahoma, at a specific place called The Farm, which was outside of Stillwater. Um, and it was a place, it was a six bedroom old farmhouse on 150 acres that people would gather, uh, musicians would gather to play. And um, it turned out like in Stillwater at the time, it was kind of isolated. There was only two lane highways into Stillwater from Tulsa and Oklahoma City once you got off I-35. So we had to make our own fun and we absolutely did at this farmhouse. Mm -hmm. And out of that came uh, what's become known as Red Dirt, the Red Dirt Sound or Red Dirt Music. Um, you know, it started as a singer-songwriter thing at first. It's basically what it was. It was people writing their own songs in their own ways. But it's expanded over the years. It, 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 with, Red Dirt, with the Red Dirt scene, we've never really had a gatekeeper, someone to say, well, you're a Red Dirt music musician or you're not. Mm -hmm. You know, we've always been more, you know, come on, if you want to say you are, Come on, you know, more power to you, I guess. But it's always <laughs> we'll know been... as soon as you start playing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, the, I think what's the, the the term of red dirt for me is um, Oklahoma is right in the middle of the country, and we've had all these musical influences come through it, um, from jazz to blues, rock and roll, country, of course, bluegrass, uh, Tex-Mex, Cajun, Western swing. Um, you can go on and on, and it's taking those different elements and creating a a new thing filtered through living in Oklahoma. I mean, that's kind of what we did. I, I love all kinds of music, and I think most musicians do. 
um, you know, we don't stop at, at the country music road. I love jazz. I love classical. I love, you know, Tex-Mex Cajun, like I said. It's, it's just a conglomeration and then putting it through our own filter to create our own sound. And that's kind of what happened. Well, it's been very successful. So <laughs> yeah. congratulations yeah. on that. Thanks. Um, Woody Fest coming up next week. Uh, you guys are playing again? We are. Uh, we'll be on the uh, main stage at 11 p.m. on Friday night. So you're playing early. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. It'll be a little bit cooler then. You know what? That's the one advantage. It's late, but it's cool. <laughs> and definitely go to the, the Woody Fest uh, site and check out because, I mean, we have a ton of Oklahoma artists that are going to be performing. I mean, the schedule is is unreal. It's going to be a great time. And I just wanted to clarify. Um, so registration is officially closed online right now, but you can show up at the door. Um, Your money talks at the door. There, <laughs> there is a payment required, but um, yeah, so so you have to go. Yeah, to and, and as out. aspiring songwriters, I would really encourage us uh, Ellis Paul is a really, really fine songwriter. Alice's know, Champagne Palace, right? That yeah, was one exactly. of his old songs. Yeah. I love Ellis, man. He, he's become a great friend. We've made so many great friends through this festival because Woody is so, uh, he's so adored by mus musicians and uh, songwriters around the, around the world. Right. Woody Guthrie is the most famous uh, Oklahoman in the world, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can go a lot of places that they know where, who he is. Um, and we've made great friends from the, through the festival all over the country and really all over the world. It, it's, been, it's been cool to see them come to little old Okima, Oklahoma. <laughs> all right, you have your mandolin? I do. You've got mics in front of you. You got a Woody Guthrie song in mind. I'll let I you do. take it away. Um, I'm gonna do a song that um, back in the uh, uh, early 2000s, the Woody Guthrie family uh, opened up uh, the archives to uh, Wilco and Billy Bragg. Uh, Woody left over 2,500 unpublished poems. Yeah, I know. This guy's just like cranking out just, two poems a day. I know. He's, he, was, he was incredible as an artist. And um, they allowed the, those two artists to come in and pick through uh, lyrics to put music to. And this was, uh, the project was called Mermaid Avenue, which is the street Woody lived on in uh, uh, Coney Island, New York. And um, this was one that was done by Jeff Tweedy and Wilco. They put the music to it, it's called uh, California Stars, lyrics by Woody Guthrie. I'd like to rest my heavy head tonight on a bed of California stars. I'd like to lay my weary bones tonight on a bed. Tell me why I must keep working on your side. Give my life to dream a dream of you on my bed of California stars. I'd like to dream. My troubles all away on a bed of California stars Then jump up from my star bed, make another day underneath My California stars, they hang like grapes On vines that shine and warm the lover's glass Like friendly wine, yes I'd give my life To lay my head tonight on a bed of California just a little taste. <laughs> John Cooper with the Red Dirt Rangers. John, where can we find more of you guys and hear more of your songs? Um, you can go to reddirtrangers.com. Okay. That's our website. You can find us on Facebook at Red Dirt Rangers. Uh, we also have uh, a guy in my band and I have hosted a radio show for the last 15 years called the Red Dirt Radio Hour. That's heard on KOSU and the Spy uh, out of Stillwater, Oklahoma City and Tulsa. So we're at a lot of places. We have our own YouTube channel. Um, we smart. are out there. That is smart. 
Kyle, where can we find more of you? Yeah, all of our film projects are on ra-pictures.com. Reckless and Abandonment? Reckless Abandonment Pictures, yeah. Well, what's the story behind Reckless Abandonment? Uh, it's kind of it's, it's kind of faith-based of just kind of leaving your for us leaving your old life to your new life with Christ. Uh, it's kind of how we we've started all that out, and then I thought it was kind of a cool name to do film or music video stuff uh, cool. as well. But yeah, yeah, that awesome. works. John, congrats on everything. Have fun Thanks. at Woody Fest and everything you do moving forward. Thank you very much for your time and talent today. Absolutely proud to be here for you. <laughs> Kyle, congrats on everything. Uh, pass along our congrats to Sarah as well. Will do. The expanding Thanks. family. Tava, great to see you. Any you closing too. thoughts for us? No, just keep keep creating and keep, keep uh, making us proud. All right, good stuff. And thank more. you, David and Paige and all the team here. <laughs> all right, more information. Uh, you're very welcome. Thank you. Uh, can be found at okfilmmusic.org.